Okay. Um, hi everyone. So my name is Jatendra from Haka Tours, and today I'm going to be talking about what we're doing in the digital space, um, where we've come from over the last few years, why we're doing it, and try and tie that all back to conversions. Um, and when I say conversions, for, for us it's mostly about sales, about money through the door. Um, now, for those that are wondering how to say my name, that's it up there. It's only three syllables. <laughs> Jatendra. Uh, I'll be testing you later on at the bar to make sure you're saying it correctly. Um, speaking about the bar, that was a um, great talk by Andy, and yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit thirsty myself, so um, uh, I won't keep you too long, we'll get through it. So one of the things I'm going to talk about today is one specific piece of digital activity that generated um, 36 grand worth of revenue for a, an online advertising spend of just $150. And this definitely made the Hakatua's highlights reel of recent times. And it sounds kind of incredible and maybe a bit difficult to believe, but stick with me because I'll get into more detail about how we did this. Okay, before we get stuck in, I'll just give you a bit of a rundown on who Hakatua's is and what we do. This is also known as the sales pitch. So we started out in, um, I've got 2007, um, Lawrence said 2006, so I'm not actually quite sure now. <laughs> um, but yeah, we run Kick-Ass Adventure and Snow Tours in New Zealand, and we really do give customers the trip of a lifetime, and that's reflected in our feedback and our growing number of referrals from past customers. Over the years, we've won a bunch of awards, including uh, the Rankers Supreme Award the last three years running, uh, a Golden Backpack Award last year, and also last year, we were really proud um, to win the Supreme Award at the Canterbury Business Awards. Um, we also own and operate our own chain of upmarket backpackers called Hucker Lodge. Um, we've got lodges here in Christchurch as, and as well as Queenstown. And uh, we've just opened one in Pai north of Auckland, and one in Auckland itself will be opening next week. So one of the big strengths is our business model. It's totally unique and hugely attractive to our customers and I'll explain it now. But first, a warning. I don't want anyone to freak out, but you're about to see the worst slide of the day. Because this is how a Haka tour works, right? I'm basically gonna read it out. It's super easy. Customers choose from one of our tours. They're between three and 24 days in length and can take in all of New Zealand or just the North or South Islands. And our tours include all the essentials, transport, accommodation, breakfast, um, a passionate guide, uh, and a few not to be missed activities. Now, on our website, customers can then personalise their tour by adding from a range of popular activities. So, your skydiving, um, your sledging, Lord of the Rings visits, um, bungee jumping, scenic flights. Um, they can also upgrade their accommodation uh, to, to a private room and that sort of thing. Um, and they can do all of this on our bespoke booking engine, and you can secure your seat with a $99 deposit. Over time, you can log back in and add more activities and make payments. Okay, so that's a bit about how our tours work, and I can guarantee you probably tuned out pretty quickly, because aside from that being the worst slide of the day, it's actually really hard to explain. And one of the biggest challenges as an online business was, and it still is, explaining that model to website visitors. So before we even think about converting them to being a paying customer, the key conversion I need to make is for them to go from someone with no understanding of how we work which given the uniqueness of our model is pretty much everyone, to someone who properly understands. From there, it's a, it's a separate and often easier job to get them to purchase a tour. So we've tackled this a number of different ways over the years, and in a few minutes I'll show you the tactic that's working really well for us at the moment and how and why it's driving conversions. Um, but before I do that, I just want to give you some context as to how we got there by just kind of giving you a brief rundown on our on the backstory of our digital marketing strategies. So Hacker Tours was born as a digital company, and it, in fact, even today, I tell people we're just as much a digital company as we are a tourism company. Our only channel was online, direct to consumer. We invested really heavily in this bespoke booking engine that, that allowed customers to book not only the tour, but all those activities as well. So this is back in 2007, this new sort of golden age of online. Travel agencies, they were on the way out. Bricks and mortar were old school and out of fashion. We didn't need them, and at that point in time, as a sort of a small startup company, it made financial sense to avoid them. So in one word, what was our strategy? 
yeah, you probably guessed it, Google, or more specifically SEO. Now, I'm sure most people here know what SEO is. You, you might not know how to do it, but you know what it is. And in 2007, winning the Google SEO game was very, very achievable for a company like us. Like I said, when we started out online, our key online was not only our key channel to market, it was our only channel. So even though we've been approached by a few small travel agents over the years that sold us, up until around mid-2014, all of our sales were from people finding us online. And the internet was this great level playing field where guys like us could compete with the big boys and win. All we needed was a, a good website and some winning SEO. And that's exactly what we did. That's how we grew from zero to a million dollars in yearly revenue, by winning at SEO. And it was a good time, it honestly was. That problem of getting people to understand how we work still existed, but because we were still young and we had plenty of traffic coming in, we still sold enough to grow the business. But like all good times, it had to end. You see, the problem that we found was that as the years, been, well, uh, as the years went by, the SEO game got harder. Everyone was doing it, and disturbingly, SEO sort of strategies and tactics that Google had once encouraged were now being frowned upon. And what we found was that by late 2012, sort of early 2013, our rankings were getting harder and harder to maintain. Yet as a business, we were incredibly reliant on Google, uh, on organic traffic from Google. So at this point, with organic search traffic and customers slowly heading in the wrong direction, we were in this kind of classic innovate or die position. Now, I'm sure some of you guys have been in the room uh, have been in a similar position where those returns from SEO were harder to get. And I think the fact that we don't have a dedicated SEO speaker here today is sort of one indication that doing SEO is not as important as it once was. Not that I personally believe SEO is dead. I think it's still very much alive. As long as I want my website to outrank your website, SEO will always be around. And nor do I think at Hacker we shouldn't do it because we still do, albeit in a very limited way. The problem is we just can't rely on it like we could have three or four years ago. Um, and as well as that, over the last few years, digital marketing got really, really interesting. Just think of all the buzzwords, right? CPA, PPC, content remarketing, remarketing, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, conversion rate optimization. All these things, we'd go on all day about it. But the one I'm gonna talk about now is video. So remember that problem I was talking about earlier? about getting customers to actually understand how our business model works and how they can use it to get themselves this amazing journey. We've explained it in many ways over the years. We've used, we've used screeds and screeds of copy, like my earlier slide. We created this funky image called the Hucker Way, which we placed on our website, which showed sort of step one, step two, step three. And while both these things had their place, we've found that by far the most effective way to do it is with a video specifically using what we call an explainer video, which as the name suggests, explains to the viewers how we work. Now there's actually a whole subset of online marketing dedicated to the science of explainer videos. So after a bit of research and looking into best practice and all that sort of thing, uh, I put together a script, we use some custom -made, custom made images and we hired a professional voice. How do you build the New Zealand trip of a lifetime? You could get a hop on, hop off bus pass, but why waste time sorting out accommodation and activities every night? And be crammed on a bus with 40 other people? A standard group tour? Maybe, but they make you pay for all activities even if you don't want them. At Haka Tours, we let you build your very own trip of a lifetime. Firstly, choose a base tour. They range from 3 to 24 days and take in the best of New Zealand. Customise your tour by adding from a whole range of activities, upgrades and extensions. Want to go rafting? Easy, just add it to your tour. How about swimming with dolphins? No problem. Or skydiving? Only add the things you want. Nothing's compulsory. We guarantee an amazing time even if you choose no extra activities. You can upgrade your accommodation and stay with us the night before and after the tour. Book and manage your tour online with a small deposit. And remember, our price includes all the essentials. Transport, accommodation, breakfast, New Zealand's best tour guides, a few unmissable experiences, and a small group of friendly travellers. 
So while a bus pass might seem cheaper, there's no breakfast, no accommodation, and definitely no small group of like-minded travellers. So get started, see what's available, and build your trip of a lifetime. Okay, so there you have it. And um, here's just a quick reminder of how we used to do that with words. So if you take a look again, you can tell it's an absolute no contest as to which one's going to convert better. Now that p video performs really well for us. Once people watch it, they totally buy into what we offer and they're heaps more likely to book a tour with us. So depending on the nature of your business, have a think about whether an explainer style video would work for you. Okay, so that's not the only video we've got. At the moment, we've got three main promotional videos, and I'll, I'll talk a bit about how we use these to boost sales. I'll start with the first one we released, which is a promo video for our seven-day South Island snow safari. Now, with respect to driving conversions, this video performs really, really well for us. Last year was our biggest snow season ever, and we, in a first, we actually had to add extra departure dates to meet demand. And we attribute much of this boost in sales to this video. I personally even contacted a few customers to ask them if the video helped them um, decide on a haka tour, and they all confirmed it. One of them even came back and said that as soon as they watched the video, they actually stopped looking at other providers and just booked with us. You know, obviously we're over the moon about this. And again, compelling, persuasive videos can drive sales. And the first time I watched this, I knew we were onto a winner because I'm the world's least likeliest person to go skiing or snowboarding. But there I was, I was ready to pack and go. Um, so anyway, since it's been on YouTube, it's had over 6,000 views, which may or may not uh, may or may not sound like a lot, um, but I'm pretty sure it's the most popular video on our YouTube page. Um, so we'll, we'll take a look. We'll, I won't play the whole thing, but we'll just watch a couple of minutes. Kia ora, my name is Mike Burden from Haka Tours. I am the snow tour guide of uh, New Zealand. We're going to go do six mountains over seven days and take you on an awesome little adventure. Cheers. <music> Sitting on top of Mount John, having a look at some of the beautiful views in uh, Lake Tekapo. And roll! Day two, oh how epic. But another easy field to navigate, basically one big bowl. Day three at Triple Cone, about to go shooting. Woo! How you guys feeling? Pretty good. Should we go for a family run? Yeah. The sun's coming out, it's beautiful out here, and uh, having a good time. Day four at Cardrona, super fun, always good. This is my first time on a box, but a little bit scared, so let's go. The bus ride is a true adventure. I'm at the helm, I've got my posse intact. We're on a mission to go and suss out the best snow, best conditions of the South Island of New Zealand. Harker to a snow safari, boom. Had a lesson yesterday and now today I kept up with everyone pretty well. Not 100% party, but close enough. <laughs> so you share with four or six, but it's your own space. And super comfortable. We met 10 new people from around the world and we're already friends. Six different resorts in seven days. Awesome. I can do it! It's my first time bungee and I am stoked. I am so ready to go. <laughs> Things like this only happen in New Zealand. I would recommend Hugger Tours to everybody.
this. I'll, I'll leave it there after the chair of death. <laughs> um, now, uh, so that's a great video. It, basically, it's like the perfect demonstration of what happens on um, that particular tour. And, you know, again, um, you could read screeds and screeds of copy and we could come up with lots of lovely kind of flowery words to describe it. Uh, and, and actually, we still do. We still have a lot of copy. Um, but that video is by far the best way to show it. So now, video's been around for years, right? It's nothing new. And in fact, we've been making videos for about four or five years now. They're all still there on our YouTube channel. Um, our older videos were good, but not great. But still, when potential customers saw them, they were far more likely to join us. So our strategy was to uh, upload the video to our YouTube channel and then embed it on our own site and maybe a few other sites. And then you, know, you kind of sit back and wait. Now, that's great. But how do you actually get people to watch your video? So like I said, our Snow promo video has been watched 6,000 times, but most of those views came from people who were already on our website. They were watching the embedded version. And that means they already know about us. And I'm pretty confident that if they already know about us, I can, I've got a good shot at converting them. What I really want to do is reach out to people who have never heard of us and convert them. And the problem, of course, with, with uh, not only YouTube, but you know, Facebook and the internet world in general is that we're drowning in content. So you may, you may have heard of some of the stats, but here's one I took from, directly from YouTube a, a week or so ago. Every minute, 300 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube. So you see what I mean about drowning in content. So what it really means is that unless your video or your piece of content goes viral somehow, it's actually quite hard to get people to see it. And so how do I get people to watch my video instead of the other 300 hours worth of video they got uploaded at the same time? Well, the answer's pretty easy. You have to pay. <laughs> and for us, that's where Facebook suddenly became very important. And here's why. You see, consumer behavior online has slowly evolved over the years from this search-based paradigm to one that's about content and sharing. Now, don't get me wrong, SEO and search are still hugely powerful and hugely relevant. But for us, we've found with the emergence of um, Facebook in particular, and, and combine that with the difficulty of SEO, it, it means for now we're getting far better returns on Facebook. And Facebook's all about content. So every day when you log into your Facebook and you've got your news feed, it's almost entirely made up of shared links, of, of pictures of cats, of selfies and people's babies, um, but also videos. And this is the kind of stuff that people actually want to see. And as we know, I just happen to have in my possession some pretty cool videos. But, and here's the thing, right? Facebook only want to show their customers stuff that they're happy to see. Already today, the average Facebook user is eligible to see around 1,500 uh, updates in their newsfeed every day if you take into account all of their friends and all the pages they like. But of course, remember, the world's drowning in content. And no one could handle 1,500 items in their newsfeed every day. So Facebook, they only show you about 300 using their algorithm. So that's why when you put something on your business Facebook page, uh, it only reaches you know, around 5% of your fans if you're lucky. So one of the ways Facebook makes money is by charging people like me to get my video into your newsfeed. So firstly, there's us trying to get our content or our video in this instance in front of the right customer for a reasonable price. Secondly, there's Facebook. They're trying to show their customers content that they're interested in and charge for it at the same time. But also they're wary of showing the customer stuff that's going to annoy them and make them leave. And thirdly, there's the customer. They probably, they probably don't want to see any advertising in their newsfeed at all. But if you can get the balance just right, Facebook video can be massive for your business. So around August last year, we started uploading our videos directly to Facebook and investing in them with Facebook campaigns. And I don't mean those, those sort of little banner ads on the side of Facebook. Um, we use what, what they call post engagement campaigns. And that's where basically you, you put your video into someone's news feed and it looks like a status update, uh, although it's clear that it's sponsored content. So that's Snow Safari video. Like I said, on YouTube, it's got around 6,000 views, which, to be fair, you know, costs no money. On Facebook, it's had, it's had over 100,000 views. It's been shared nearly 300 times, and it's had over 400 comments. 
Now, the YouTube videos had five comments, and two of those were from me. <laughs> so, you know, unlike YouTube, the, the, those views weren't free. And I, while I can't get into exact figures, the cost so far is well under $1,000. So I'm finding it really, really cost effective. And this is why Facebook suddenly became so important. Using their advertising platform, you can slice and dice the demographic data or the demographic options available to you to reach out to those potential customers who wouldn't actually find you in Google or YouTube. And 600, uh, sorry, 6,000 versus 100,000, there's no contest. So how do we find these people? I mean, 100,000 views is awesome, right? But you want it to be the right 100,000. They need to be the right age, live in the right country, and be likely to be interested in your video and therefore your product. Now, the good news is all of these targeting options are available in Facebook. The how-to of Facebook advertising is probably worth a dedicated conference in its own right, maybe next year. Um, but my advice is just to get in and have it a go. There's heaps of online guides and that sort of thing out there, uh, and we pretty much just taught ourselves. So yeah, try set up a campaign, especially if you've got some great video content. You, you only have to start with a few dollars at a time, um, and you can tweak the results from there, or tweak, the, tweak your campaigns based on the results. Um, so those numbers for us are really compelling. Even more compelling when we get people booking tours with us after discovering, uh, discovering us on Facebook. And again, I can't share exact numbers except to say the returns on our advertising spend make it worthwhile. I'm just going to show you now one of our adventure tour promo videos. We'll watch a couple of minutes of that as well. We've got two main ones that we use on Facebook, a North Island um, tour and a South Island tour. This is the North one. It's been viewed over 130,000 times. But more importantly, or just as importantly, it's actually been shared over 3,700 times. And when someone shares your content on Facebook, it's a massive endorsement for that piece of content. So remember, these consumers' news feeds are full of updates and the like. So for someone to take the time to click the share button on your content uh, makes it really worthwhile. So we'll just watch a couple of minutes. Day one in Auckland, this is where our journey begins. We are heading down to Whitianga, which is on the Coromandel Peninsula. Here we are at Hot Water Beach. You have to dig a hole in the sand. You have to dig pretty hard, but once you get it, we're all worthwhile in the end. This is the most quintessential, common Kiwi taste for the country. Here we are at Whangapaua Beach in the Coromandel Peninsula. Just been around at Otama, just had a bit of a picnic, a swim, playing with the rugby ball. Now we're heading off to Waitomo. in the White Temple Caves. We have sailed down 100 meters and looked around some pretty sweet caves. Awesome. Wicked. <laughs> Um, hot thermal areas around these lakes so you can always just jump out go for a swim uh, we are on the geothermal highway so you guys might not realize that we are sitting on a ticking time bomb okay so I'll, I'll finish it there <laughs> um, we do have more tour guides in Berto by the way it's just that somehow we got into all the videos um, okay so uh, again it's it's a great way to, to demonstrate to potential customers the experience that they'll get on tour 
Now, over the last probably nine months or so, we've racked up some great numbers of views and stuff on these videos. Uh, so our, key, our three key promo videos have now been watched over 270,000 times. Uh, been shared over 6,000 times. Been liked over 20,000 times. And have generated uh, more than 2,100 positive comments. And you know, we're a small business, so these numbers are huge for a company like us, and it definitely justifies our Facebook investment. And the great thing about this is we've now got something called, or what I call social proof. I'm not sure of the exact definition, maybe um, Susan can tell us after. Um, but for me, it basically means that if heaps of people endorse you on a site like Facebook and other people see this, it's quite an authentic kind of endorsement. It's, it's basically, it's a lot better if people are talking you up rather than you talking yourself up. And so if there's heaps of great comments on the video and heaps of shares on the video, then the tour must be good as well, right? So to take advantage of the social proof, one thing I started doing was actually embedding all our successful YouTube, uh, sorry, all our successful Facebook videos onto our website so that people could actually see those shares and those likes and those comments. So we used to embed the YouTube version because that's kind of just what you did, right? Well, not anymore. Um, so that's just a screenshot uh, of our tour page for that North Island video and um, I'm not sure if you can see it, but near the bottom of the uh, embedded video, it says it's got you know, 11,000 likes, um, a whole bunch of comments, and 3,744 shares. So when people see that, that in itself is quite persuasive. OK, so um, a quick change of tack now. I'm not quite done talking about video just yet, but I need to make a slight detour and talk about remarketing. Um, does anyone here know what remarketing is? Yep, a few people. Um, a few years ago, we started dabbling in uh, remarketing or retargeting, and it's proven to be a good way to increase conversion. So remarketing is simply when you show your ads on other websites, but only to people who have already been on your website. So basically, if you come to my website, we put a little cookie on your computer. We then follow you around the internet, and when you go onto a site that sells advertising space, um, generally, generally through um, the Google um, uh, display network, um, you'll see a Hakatua's ad. And the theory is you go, oh, Hakatua's, yeah, I was just on their site a little while ago, I remember them, let me go back and check out their tours. And you go back, and eventually they, they purchase. Um, and the theory is as you remind someone enough times uh, about who you are and what you do, they'll eventually come back and purchase. Uh, now, we find it to be really effective in getting customers to come back and actually make that booking. Uh, originally, we started using that Google Display Network to remarket ourselves, and the, the results were pretty good. Cost per acquisition uh, was acceptable, uh, although we have found those costs have been going up over the last year or so. But definitely uh, worth a try. Uh, and again, uh, with uh, Google remarketing, you can start with a very small budget to see how it performs. Um, so now, uh, if you you know, if you've never heard of it before, now when you get back to your desk, you'll start noticing. And as an aside, if you ever want to see uh, who's remarketing to you, uh, go to that website, www.whoisretargeting.me, and it will show you all the ads that you're actually eligible to see. Um, the other, other thing you do, actually, is just visit the Juicy website, because um, everywhere you go on the internet after that, you'll see Juicy ads popping up. So um, they do a great job at it. You can't forget Juicy once you go to their website. Anyway, so I've talked a bit about our video marketing on Facebook and the success we've had, and I've just touched on remarketing and how that's performed well for a few years now. Uh, but with respect to conversions, it was when we combined Facebook video campaigns with remarketing that conversions really took off. Okay, so if a picture says 1,000 words, and a video is worth a thousand pictures, then using remarketing to show your, visit, your videos to previous site visitors is basically like injecting them with a whole bunch of illegal steroids. And here's the proof. Remember that explainer video? Well, what we did was we took that and we started placing it in people's Facebook news, Facebook news feeds after they visited our website. Now, I already know that particular uh, video was really persuasive, very compelling, and by spending just $1 a day after a few months, 
sure enough, we'd hit over $36,000 worth of sales. Now, just quietly, it's actually loads more than that. It's just that I'm having a few technical issues with my Facebook tracking code. Uh, I, think, I honestly believe the figure's closer to 100K. Now, I was pretty happy with that. So if you can, try video remarketing on Facebook. Now, we're not getting too carried away because we know some of those website visitors would have come back and made a purchase anyway. But there's no doubt in my mind that remarketing this particular video was, is strongly driving conversions. Because remember back to my first challenge, getting people to understand how we work and the benefits of a hakatua. Well, if anyone leaves the website in any doubt as to how we work, all I need them to do is check their Facebook. Because soon enough, my video is going to pop up and it's going to... Uh, uh, show up and remove any of those doubts and it'll get them to come back and put down a deposit for their next holiday. Okay, so another benefit of all this um, Facebook uh, video um, advertising is how it's allowing us to build a brand. So out of all those quarter of a million people who've watched the videos, you know, they're not, obviously they're not all going to come on tour, but still, maybe a family member or a friend will come on tour. Maybe they'll come on tour in, in a couple of years. But the point is that it's, it's allowing us to build a brand, whereas with Google, you can't really do that because people search for something and your site comes up in the results, and yeah, they find your site, but there's no real connection there. With Facebook, I can build a brand now so that when those people do want to come on tour, when they do want to come to New Zealand, they already know about us. So. When we promote our videos on Facebook, the obvious goal I've got is to get people to watch them. That's the conversion we're after. And as we've seen, this is happening. Um, and a whole bunch of people click like and share and all that sort of thing. And that was also great. Because as I was saying, that's an endorsement of the brand. Given that, I'd be happy enough if they just watched the video. So these were some of the unintended consequences of those video campaigns. But there's one more that I need to mention because, because it came as a very pleasant surprise to me. And that is that after people were watching, liking, clicking, sharing, all that sort of stuff, over 6,000 of them actually decided to like the Hakatua's Facebook page. So we started getting all these new likes, which again is huge for us. We used to run a few kind of highly targeted, dedicated likes campaigns to get new fans, um, but we eventually stopped as these videos were bringing in new fans who were obviously very highly qualified. And as fans of Hakatua's, we now have the opportunity to market to them from our Facebook page. Um, so I'll just talk a little bit about this. All up, we've got a little over 20,000 Facebook fans, and keeping them engaged is the key goal of our Facebook posts. Um, we post generally one or two times a day, and it's mostly images. And the conversion we're looking for here is really just one of engagement, a like, a comment, or a share. We generally have around 4,000 people engage with that content every week, or around 20% of our fan base. But the fact still remains that our, most of our fans don't see our stuff. We don't really know how many of those 6,000 fans um, generated by our video campaigns have seen much more of us. So we still do paid advertising to our own fan base every now and then, which on the face of it seems pretty weird, right? I mean, you generally have to pay to get your fans. And even though those fans were generated by the video campaigns, we still had to pay for the video campaigns. And then if we really want to reach heaps of them, we have to pay again for more advertising. Um, and all this really means is that the rent will go up. You see, over time, Facebook, just like Google, will be under more pressure to deliver bigger returns to their shareholders. And ultimately, the cost of advertising will go up. It might be two, three, four, five years away, but it will happen. Over the last 12 to 18 months, we've seen organic reach being cut by Facebook, meaning that have a that having a page with 10 or even 20,000 fans is not the asset it once was, because you just can't reach them all without paying. So if you hear people talking up their massive Facebook fan count, ask them how many people they actually reach, how many actually engage with their brand. Because the truth is, if you put, say, an image on your page, you'll be doing well if more than 5 or 6% of your fans see it, unless, of course, you pay. You see, we virtually eliminated our Google CPC budget because the rent just got too high. It was way more expensive compared to Facebook, which is currently a fraction of the cost, but like I said, we know it can't last forever. So my advice to you, and something that we, st we still do every day, is to remember that the rent will go up and to keep looking for different sources of traffic. Never kind of rest on your laurels, and as hard as you can, try not to be too reliant on one source. 
So even though we've come quite a long way in just two years from being a company that was super dependent on Google to one that's now getting customers from Google and from Facebook and a few other sites, we still have to be conscious of change and of that rent going up. So ultimately for us, this means we need a direct line to potential customers. And for us, this means email marketing. So if a customer wants to get excuse me, emails from us, that's great. There's no third party to deal with. It's a direct relationship. So this is something we've just started basically tinkering with and we'll be working on hard over the next year or so as we look to continue to reduce our reliance on these other sites. So it's early days yet, so I can't really talk about performance, but it will be a big part of our journey over the next few years. So before I wind up, I'll just run you, few, run you through a few other things which we've done, which, was help, which have helped us get more customers in recent times. So the best source of quality traffic. Now, while Facebook works well and, and Google keeps ticking over, there's one website that actually sends better quality traffic than either of them, and that's NewZealand.com. Um, best of all, it's free, and hopefully their rent will never go up. Uh, visitors to our site from NewZealand.com spend more time on our site than almost any other source, and they purchase. Now, the volume of traffic may not be high, but the quality is. So one of the easiest things you can do when you get back to your office is make sure your business is listed on NewZealand.com with a nice profile, uh, some quality images, and ideally a quality video. You can even upload deals and that sort of thing that get published on pages. Um, and you can upload articles as well, sort of like blog posts. Um, though I think they need to be of a certain standard in order to get published. Um, but if you need any help, reach out to them and ask. It's definitely worth your time. Get chatting, right. Live chat on your website. Has anyone got live chat on their website? Yep, so we, found it, we find it works really well for us. Um, once you start chatting, you, you've got the ability to build a rapport with customers. Um, you can answer their questions in real time. And again, it's not one of those things where you get heaps and heaps of customers, but the conversion rates for us are really high. Um, the need for speed. Um, speed is hugely important. Um, we've worked really hard on our site over the last couple of years to speed it up. What we've found, if I get to the right page, um, yeah, is that the, a faster website will convert. I think Amazon released a big study a while ago saying they uh, sped up their site by 0.8 of a second or 0.8 of a millisecond or something crazy like that, and they attributed that to a, a, a revenue increase in, in the millions. Um, now, there's a bunch of online tools you can use to measure your site speed, um, and we use the Google one as a benchmark. Um, now, big, beautiful images on the one hand, um, they tend to be very important in the tourism game, but on the other hand, it can have quite a negative impact on site speed, not to mention things like code bloat and, and other issues. So, look, I'm, I'm not a developer, so my only advice is to use the Google site speed tool, see where you're at, and then have a chat to your website developer about making it faster. And speed really is important. I myself was traveling around Tasmania a, a few months ago, and I was really surprised at how, how slow many of the websites of local tourism businesses were, places like restaurants and accommodation. Because once people get here or there or wherever they're going, they're often relying on a slow 3G connection or a weak Wi-Fi signal, so speedy websites will convert. If you're a restaurant, I think just having your hours posted along with a phone number, it could be enough to get someone through the door. Okay, so one thing I will talk about is mobile. Not sure where the slide went, probably skipped it. Um, Go mobile. So we released a new website design in late March, and it was fully responsive, which means it works on small screens as well as large. So prior to that, Hacker Tool was, was pretty awful on a smartphone or a tablet, and the usual stats were awful. Really high bounce rates and only a few seconds uh, on site per visitor. Uh, and we were literally bleeding traffic. <laughs> and we had to do something. So as a quick win, because rebuilding our website was never gonna be uh, a quick process, so as a quick win, we actually set up uh, a separate uh, m.hackertools.com website and we redirected all mobile traffic to it. And I think this is still quite a viable strategy today if redesigning your current website to, go to, uh, to be responsive is too expensive or it's gonna take too long. Um, we just used a cheap and cheerful WordPress site very little design and some basic information. It's never in a million years going to win any design awards, but as soon as we released it, stats like bounce rate and time on site improved. Now, the site had virtually no functionality. You know, you couldn't book a tour or anything like that. All we really had was um, tour information and a contact form, but it was better than nothing. 
and it gave, still gave customers enough of a flavour about us so they could come back on a PC and visit us. And the proof came from the fact that we got lots of people actually contacting us using the contact page on our mobile website. Um, what, one other thing I'll talk about, um, which I didn't have a slide prepared for at all, and um, I just sort of thought about on the way here, is travel bloggers. Um, has anyone here worked with travel bloggers, professional travel bloggers? Yep. So um, we've dabbled with this a little bit over the last couple of years. Um, uh, for, for me, it's been a little bit hit and miss. Some of them are more professional than others. Is probably the best way of describing it. Um, we worked uh, really well with Liz Carlson of YoungAdventurous.com. I'm sure some of you people um, would have heard of Liz. Um, so she still generates um, lots of bookings for us, basically, um, based on her blog posts that are now probably uh, 18 or 19 months old. Um, so yeah, that's. That's really about it. Um, that's been our journey over the last few years. Um, you know, when I got asked to come down and speak here, I was, I was quite excited about it because I really felt it was a, um, a great sort of endorsement for what we're doing in the, in the digital space. Um, but from a personal perspective, it's actually been really cool because um, I've, been able to, I've, I've been forced basically in, in doing this to kind of stop and step back from my day to day and really kind of document the, the journey we've been on over the last two years. Like when I was first hired, I was basically hired to do SEO, but today SEO is less than 5% of what I do. And even now, like over the next 12 to, uh, 12 to 18 months, it's gonna change again as we continue developing our email marketing and we start looking at things like usability and conversion rate optimization. So hopefully um, there's been st some stuff in here that's been of value to you. Um, as I said, it's been great coming down and um, yeah, my name's Jitendra, ask me anything. <laughs>